Hey, good morning, Trojans. I hope you get to watch this at least by lunch today. I'm going to make this as quick as I can. Lori Grimm is going to send out a clarifying email um, to make sure if I make any small errors, we're going to clean it up. But I'm going to put this video out just so you can start processing um, how you're going about, you know, intervening with kids that um, may have kind of crashed at the end of semester one for, you know, we think primarily for Omicron, um, but also because we are a school a tier one or title one school, a school that needs to be really strong with interventions. I'm going to really emphasize early interventions for semester two, but right now we're just talking about semester one um, and then the things we've all dealt with. Just know this, that I know, I believe, I trust everybody's working really hard on behalf of their students, behalf of their colleagues, and, you know, really living up to the moral imperative. Um, of just doing what's right by kids and we've been through quite a roller coaster ride since you know the day we got out of school march 2020 and i know we've all learned a lot and we've had lots of questions probably more questions than what there's been answers to but for right now i just want to focus on as we end this semester and taking good care of ourselves and taking good care of our kids going into semester two so they aren't you know um kind of punished by what happened by the circumstances. It's kind of our job to make sure that um, that doesn't happen. And, and I trust you for that. So just know that. So um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put on um, my screen here in a second. But um, E grades, OK, we know E grades traditionally have been between 50 and 59 percent. In a conversation I've had with other high school principals, and I think it's Riverside, um, they were discussing maybe even for some kids, for some of the kids that because of COVID related reasons or other things, you know, that are kind of out of their control. Okay. I'm not talking about the kids who I hear show up and don't do anything. Okay. Um, hopefully we can identify those kids much earlier and start doing interventions with them. But right now we're just talking about the end of semester one. But for those kids in your teacher heart, you know that there's something, an obstruction, they came up against a barrier. Um, they've even talked about at other schools dropping it down to 40 just because of Omicron, but also you could catch other kids in that too. That's at your discretion. So just know that. You've heard that here. It's okay. Along with that, um, some conversations we've had in the Trojan Student Success Team meetings and BLT and then kind of just here and there, um, we asked some teachers that have shared Maybe we just need to give some grace to some kids. You know, maybe their grades were okay until maybe they tapped out for a while for medical reasons. And maybe the teachers, the staff members, uh, maybe there were substitute teachers there. And, and we know our subs do a great job, but it's just not quite the same as when the teacher who knows the standards really well is moving kids in that direction. So maybe we give those kids grace and maybe give them a passing grade. I would say. Um, kind of the do no harm there would be if you are giving kids grace, giving them that passing grade um, and showing that compassion, think about where that grade might lead them. So if they end up with a D in your, in your grading or a C um, and they're moving on to a course that takes a little bit uh, more rigor, kind of same content, same subject area, um, we could be doing undue harm there. So really think about that. So I think in terms of the giving grace, probably thinking more about, you know, the, the non-building courses, I guess you could say, uh, the ones that don't continue on with a higher level of rigor. So just think about that. The other thing we have, uh, and I've heard lots of teachers talk about this, is we could do kind of a retro passing grade. If students show up second semester, let's say they failed first semester, and they can show you um, math, science, social studies, what have you, language arts, that they can hit standards and they do well, whatever. If they earned a C or better, maybe um, you could go back to first semester and do a grade change and maybe give them a passing grade there. You have license to do that, just know that. Um, and then the other thing is uh, we have the mid-year summer school popping up. And Lori just gave me the dates on that. We're going to run that from 2.50 in the afternoon until 4.30 because we have buses. That won't start until February 7th. Okay, we're going to run that for about two weeks. And we're going to see where we end up. The kids that are going to that are the kids that end up getting, you know, E's and F's um, in the grade reports, uh, semester one grades. And they're going to be invited in. Letters going out to their families. We've got right now, I think we've got nine teachers willing to do that. That's amazing. That's awesome. 
Um, so we've got that piece too. The other piece we have, make sure I'm not forgetting here. Oh, we have Troy time. Troy time will start um, addressing these E's. And if you were to take the, I guess the floor, not the ceiling, the floor down to a high 40s, 45, maybe even 40, but don't be afraid to reach out to colleagues, other schools, see what they're doing. Um, if you give them that E, they're gonna be targeted for doing, you know, Troy time interventions. And we're gonna push hard on those from the, the second Tuesday in February, I think that's the ninth, and we're gonna push that all the way out to the last five, Friday in February, I think that's the 25th. So we've got interventions. I just tell you right now, the best interventions are the ones that happen in school, the ones that happen outside of school, um, that's a little bit like, you know, if you build it, they will come and you just hope they'll come, um, show up and, and do the best they can. So that's that. So hopefully that gives you some good direction, some direction. And then of course you guys have your department goals for quarter two, you guys are leaning on. And this is, um, you know, this is urgency, no question about it. This is not a uh, judgment on your professional effort or knowledge. So just know that we are adaptive school. We're responsive. We're going to do what we can to meet the needs of our community. And right now we are, you know, ear high in Omicron. Um, I'm hoping it's leveling out, but uh, we don't know that. And it does affect the way kids learn and the way we're able to teach. So anyway, enough of that. Now, you know, um, let me show you just two really quick documents here. And then you guys can freeze on them if you want. So the first document is what we call the transcript process for posting or changing grades. And this is ran through our district CIA on-time grad. It involves principals, assistant principals, counselors, um, all the people who, I guess, kind of enforce policies and make decisions and have license to do things. And, and teachers are included in this too. Um, all of those different, um, Headings across the top. These are the different ways traditionally. This form was made in two, 2019. And each of the different rows on the left kind of tell you the what, the restrictions, documentation. But this is kind of the guide we use uh, when we're looking at situations in order to help students. So just know this is being used across the district at the high school and to a small degree at the middle school level because middle schools, kids can capture high school credit. Um, like I said, you can freeze on this and look at this as you want. So just know that all of the things that you see captured on the framework and just know this where it says there at the bottom, all posting and or changing of grades on the transcript are subject to building principal discretion. I've never asked a teacher to change their grades. What I have done, I've asked teachers to really be curious about the grades kids are getting, to think about the standards, and everything the student has done, of course, and then what the teachers do to help kids get there. And if you're willing to kind of go above and beyond just the regular classroom, the tier one life, the tier one experience, um, and, and work with kids on a continual basis, you can go back and do a grade change whatever you want. So just know that. Um, and I will have conversations with teachers, um, mainly out of curiosity. I'm never gonna tell you you have to do something. I've never done that, I never will. But I think sometimes some professional discourse is not a bad way to go. And usually I learn too. I, I learn how, how I can better support teachers in situations. So yeah, sometimes that can be a little bit conflicty, but um, I think it's in the name of um, you know bettering all kinds of things, practices, uh, students, of course. Um, so just know that um, we're coming from a place of just trying to be professionally sound and, and continuing to grow. The other form I want to show you is how we're intervening with students. This is a document I started putting together about a week ago, and I'm looking kind of what's preventative, what are we doing preventative, what are we doing as early interventions, and then what are we doing now, inter interventions for semester one, um, kind of jokingly, but it's not a joke. I kind of call what we're doing now is kind of like post-mortem in some ways when we do it after the fact. We got to get to more prevention. So you've heard a little bit about, or you read a little bit about a, a Google form that we're going to send out with kids that are getting Fs, we're going to wait on that, okay? We're going to use that as an early intervention, identification, kind of a, this is what the kid needs, isn't doing, okay, or barriers so that we in the tier two world and the tier three world can put together the very best interventions 
known to mankind. We will search far and near um, to find out what the best ways are. We may be doing some of those right here, right now. So anyway, we're going to hold off on that form. I'm still going to send it to you so you can look at it. You don't need to fill anything out between now and the end of the semester. But when we get into pre midterm one grading, when we get into second semester, that's a new practice we will be taking on in order to make our tier two and our tier three teams highly functioning. We're a multi-tiered system of support school. And I think this is the best way for us to get the right information from those people who are on the front lines and that's our teachers. So just a heads up on that, okay? Okay, thank you for all you guys are doing. Lori, we'll send you a little bit more information. We'll kind of clean up anything that I might have messed up on here. But uh, just know that um, we appreciate everything you guys are doing. We trust you. And this has nothing to do with we don't think you guys are working hard. We know you are, okay? We're all trying to work hard together, but we got to do it in a really systemat systematic and as smart a way as possible, okay? That's all I got. Thanks, guys.